cases are homelessness are unfortunate due to circumstances beyond their control. In other situations, the homelessness is due to the person's own undoing. Like, if they talk to me, if they come up to ask me for money or something like this, you know, I'll talk to them or something like that. But and if, if they just, like, you know, just stay there and they hand out, I don't bother. It's a cry for help. You know, if you drink out of a trash can, they need help. America is one of the richest countries in this world, and you should be doing more for the homeless people. I think there are people who are down on their luck who, in certain circumstances, aren't able to uh, help themselves out. Honestly, I don't feel bad for them. I've been homeless about mm, approximately about 15 years. My work career was truck driver for the past 20 years. And I developed arthritis and I had to get off the truck and all that. So. always had a job I'll find something it, but it's it's not like that um, I've been unemployed since 2004 this is 2007 last week the Census Bureau released staggering figures which showed that one in seven Americans now live in poverty that's over 43 million people in the richest country in the world and you would think that during a recession during an election year this would have heralded a massive response from politicians. The Democrats would cry that this is proof that the Americans need the government to help them now more than ever. The Republicans would point to the Obama administration and its failures in economic policy as contributing factors to these devastating figures. But for some reason, Washington was largely silent. For some reason, they continue to debate whether or not the richest portion of the population deserve tax cuts. So what do we make of the fact that as millions of Americans descend into poverty, no one seems to care. Our government, they, they, they say that they're going to help us. They make all these promises to us. When they get in office, they forget all about us and leave us out here on the streets with nothing, with nothing, no support, no nothing, and it hurts. <laughs> You're playing, right? I guess nothing from the government, though. Nothing. I don't even get food stamps. I guess nothing from the government. Bloomberg is the one that's taking everything from everybody. He don't give a fuck about you, you and nobody else. But you taking out the poor people's mouth and give them to somebody who don't need it. Um, I, I do believe that they should do more. Because right now they're starting to cut down on a lot of programs. This is how you make a banana republic. You give more and more tax cuts to the richest people in the country. You make them richer and richer. And as I've shown you many times over the last 30 years, the top 1%, their income rose on average by 281%. The top 1% in that time made an extra $973,000. They did excellent. Now you see what's happened to the rest of us. 20% of our kids live in poverty. One out of every six of us uh, is now being served by some sort of anti-poverty program. You saw all those numbers. They're devastating. When are we going to stop giving more tax cuts to the rich so they can get a little richer? That's not how this country was built. If a free society cannot help the many who are poor, it cannot save the few who are rich. And you can't replace when you love someone, but it goes to waste. Could it?
What's more disturbing is the number of people who walked by the injured man and never stopped to help. After this homeless man is attacked, hitting his head on the car behind him, he lies on the street unaided. People stop to look. They go by, even load their groceries. But it takes 19 minutes before someone finally calls 911. By then, it's too late. The man dies of his injuries. But would he have been treated differently if he hadn't been homeless? The homeless are probably one of the most negatively stereotyped groups in our society. Jack DeVidio, a social psychologist at Yale University. And God forbid they're holding a beer can. And if they're holding a beer can, it gives us the explanation, the excuse not to get involved and still believe we're the good people in this situation. And that certainly seemed to be the case when Mick fell once more, this time carrying alcohol. We waited. A beautiful view of New Jersey. And waited. And waited. In all, 88 people go by, and we're beginning to think no one will ever step up to the plate. But then we meet this most extraordinary woman. Excuse me. Excuse me. Linda Hamilton, who police tell us is sometimes homeless herself. Excuse me, can somebody call this man an ambulance? Excuse me, could you call him an ambulance? A lone voice asking for help. But unbelievably, 26 more people walk by, ignoring Please. her. You know, I mean, I have a piece of plastic here. That's like a house. I'm presently homeless, but I ride the bus back and forth to Mohegan Sun. It's a casino in Connecticut. So basically, you could say I live on the bus. I get close to kill it, but that ain't enough. But that ain't enough for them. But I, or I'm a bum. How can I be a bum? I can't get money. So I collected cans, and I earned about $10 collecting cans today, which isn't a lot of money. It's just enough to get me a ticket back to Mohegan Sun. I got a nail file, but the clippers were too heavy. I threw them out. You do it on the concrete. This isn't real concrete, I guess, but that'll file them down pretty good. At times when it's night, I would eat out of the garbage, or I would go to the donut, Dunkin' Donuts, and wait till they throw the donuts out. And I would wait for people to pass by so they don't see me going in the garbage you know, to get the food. I got my food from other places, like trucks delivered, and then there's garbage bags. Bakeries throw out perfectly good food. Um, I would, would eat out of the garbage because I didn't have time enough to go to the uh, to the soup kitchens that's around. It gets easier. You get to one where the free stuff is, and it gets easier. The first winter is the worst, the coldest, the outside. Second winter, you find that place to stay, maybe like the Bowery Mission, something like that. They'll let you sleep on the chapel floor if it's cold. Every year, my stepdad, he gets laid off work, so. It's nine of us in the family, yes, and during the whole winter, we don't have like, like food, and we come here, food. Yeah, because we have like a hard time. It's not because they aren't trying. They have jobs, they work, but they still come up short. It's not that I choose to be homeless or anything. I can't afford to live anywhere, and I'm living basically, you know, from one person to another. Never thought I'd ever end up like this, but I didn't have no choice. Because right? I'm all on my own, and my family, and everybody is gone. So. One American stricken by poverty is a personal tragedy. 37 million poverty stricken Americans is a national disgrace. They, when you say Americans, that don't apply to us. We don't even pay no attention to it. Turn the TV off because he's not talking to us. 
Homelessness. Homelessness is a state of mind where in time with a quick fix the blind can see. With a glass pipe, a little brillo and something white the deaf can hear. But it's not the fear of the whisper in the ear, nor the fear of the whisper in the head, but the fear of being dead because they don't understand what that whisper said. You see, homelessness is a disease in America, but being homeless is different. Being homeless is used to more or less compress the stress of the rest who feel blessed when they see the homeless. But that same feeling of being blessed might stress their depression and rapidly decrease the thump in their chest if they ever run across homelessness with no feet on their legs. Insane. Insane is the pain of homeless people who feel nothing but rain. They see their son, but there's no sign there to claim. The nest has been put at the end of homeless when that little flicker of a candle is blown out and all the hope was caught up in smoke and blown away in a breeze. All that is left is the scent of what might have been in the life of sin. S-S-E-N. Nest, spelled backwards at the end of homeless, spells homeless sin. You see, homeless sin is between homeless and homeless nest because homelessness is where a needle is stuck in their flesh. But homeless sin is what put it there with the lack of hope after being homeless. It is the sin of the homeless. Now homeless is where I'm at, not standing still, but on a struggle to come up while eating chitlins. And in my comedy, I see gutless pigs walk past me every day, acting like they're the predator and not the prey. Thinking they are better than me, but they can never see the truth of harmony that lies within me. I'm no longer homeless in my head. I am past that. I'm now a homeless success, so you'll never see me stuck in homelessness. For the wealthiest nation in the world, putting an end to poverty is not a matter of money. It's a matter of will. Do we have the will? Do we even care?